Hi, it's the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your March 2017 mid-month readings and thank you so much for joining us here today. Welcome to any newcomers. Always thank you to those of you who continue to watch and listen and subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, a, a thank you to those of you who take the time to write in your comments and send such lovely support and feedback. Very much appreciated. Uh, and also thanks to those of you who continue to keep me so busy with personal one-on-one -on -one readings. It's an honor and a pleasure. And also a note of gratitude to my regular clients for your consistent feedback and how those readings continue to play out in your lives. And if any of you are interested in a personal reading with me and you haven't read with me before, you can click on the little about or description button on my YouTube channel's homepage, which will give you a little more information and detail. Uh, you can email me directly at maggie, the number one, mcguire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to work with you. I do readings full time, six days a week, so I'm usually able to get back with you quite quickly and schedule a reading almost always within a two-week period of time. I do love romance and compatibility readings, career work and finance, year overviews, and a variety of other ones live and recorded. Uh, so again, send me an email if you're interested and uh, we'll go from there. So please remember that these are general readings and there are many of you watching, so they're not going to mean the same thing to the same degree and intensity for everyone who's watching. So that's exactly why we suggest you watch your rising and your moon sign videos as well. They may play out a little more predictively for you. They just may give you additional bits of insight and clarity into what's going on in your life for the time frame that the reading covers. So try to watch sun, moon, and rising if you know them and if you can. I am using the Gilded Tarot deck that I typically use for general readings by artist Cyril Marchetti, drawing the usual eight cards uh, with an additional ninth card from the bottom of the deck for overall energy. So let's move right into this. This reading is for Scorpio. The water sign of Scorpio for March 2017, mid-month. March 2017, mid-month. What does the remainder of March have in store for our Scorpions? March 2017, mid-month for Scorpios. Okay, we begin with the Ten of Swords reversed, followed by the Sun. That's a nice healing combination. Next to that, we have the Hierophants paired with the Moon. We have the Eight of Pentacles followed by Death. And we have the Seven of Pentacles followed by the Hermit. And from the bottom of the deck, representing overall energy, the Two of Wands. You know, there's been a few signs so far for the mid-month readings, Scorpio, you included, that have a strong, strong divine timing and orchestration at play here because we have one, two, three, four, five of your nine cards are major arcana cards, so significant presence, fingers of the divine kind of playing out for the next couple of weeks. So I'm getting that for a lot of you <coughs> Scorpios. This is something, this is a, a situation regarding job, career, work, finance, career path, uh, could even be property. I'm feeling it more of that tangible pentacles earth energy because uh, that's just what I'm getting. Uh, you can apply the same energy to relationship arenas, but I think for a lot of you, I'm getting more that this is about um, whether or not to continue in something you've been investing in. And I feel like that something is job, work, career path, perhaps, or, or a project that you've uh, been investing in. For some of you, this could be a spiritual path, too, that you may have reached a point where you're thinking of doing something different or second-guessing yourself somehow. And it's all about kind of keeping your the big picture in mind or figuring out what you want for your future because that's your overall energy and advice, which I'm actually going to start with from the bottom of the deck, the two of wands. Fire energy here, which is the element that governs the suit of wands, the creative, dynamic, forward-moving suit. Uh, and it's also about creating and building and manifesting. The two of wands represents being at a crossroads and needing to make a decision. Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I choose this path? Do I choose that path? The key to choosing this is in thinking ahead, long-term thinking and planning. What's your big picture? Um, and I feel like for those of you, particularly those of you, this is going to be about job, work, career path, or some other kind of tangible project. It feels like you've come to a crossroads where 
you may want to reevaluate what your long-term goals are, decide if you still want to go for those and perhaps shift and change them. Um, because the key to choosing the right path is in uh, whatever your, your big picture is, your long-term goal is. So it looks like a lot of the, the rest of this it actually looks like a very contemplative energy for the next couple of weeks, uh, kind of looking at that, maybe re-examining it and shifting or changing it. We begin with the Ten of Swords in reverse, followed by the Sun. So swords, here we have air energy, which is what governs the suit of swords, and it's mental, cerebral, intellectual energy. It's not very emotionally driven. It's more about what goes on up here. Words, ideas, communications, belief systems, outlooks, and truth and clarity as well. Tends to represent the end of a cycle, something coming full circle. In the upright position, it's the Ten of Swords is sometimes referred to as the stabbed in the back card. It can represent uh, a deep and unexpected sense of betrayal from a person, a situation, uh, in, in, but there's healing aspects to this card as well. The tens represent that it's over. The worst is behind you. Um, you can see there's a healing light shining down through these swords. The sun is rising in the background. A new day is dawning. And the animals are beginning to return to the scene. Uh, whatever happened to put this man face down in the ground, it's over now. The worst is over. And in the reverse, I feel like it's just, uh, for some reason, I feel like the energy is just kind of that same energy. Um, something may have happened uh, in in your work, in, in, at your workplace, in job or career. You may have been passed up for something. Uh, there is a sense of betrayal. For some of you, this could be ongoing, but I feel like it's something which happened in the past, although I feel like it's recent. Um, and you're still kind of, the energy is lingering, but you're beginning to move through it. Uh, because that Ten of Swords is, is paired with the Sun card, which is a beautiful card. Uh, the Sun represents an uplifting of energy, a loosening up of previously restrictive energies. Uh, uh, it illuminates, brings life, love, laughter. There's a strong theme of just fun here, uh, a loosening up of tension, stress, anxieties as well. It magnifies positive energy and greatly uh, decreases or lessens negative energy uh, that might be present in the cards around it. Um, it can also represent getting away, taking a vacation, kind of just, just letting things kind of fall to the wayside for a time being. So some of you, it feels like something happened recently. Job, career, workplace, a project of some kind. This could be, you could apply the same energy to relationship, but I'm feeling like it's more tangible energy. You may have uh, taken some time off. Maybe some of you quit a job. Uh, maybe some of you just took a leave or took some time off or decided to get away for a while to kind of whatever this situation was that happened that took you off guard and maybe for some of you left you feeling really kind of stabbed in the back or this sense of betrayal. I think you're, you're, you're working your way through it, but it's caused you to kind of re-examine where you're at and where you're going. So next we have a combination of the Hierophant accompanied by the moon. So the higher fonts in another major arcana card, it represents convention, tradition, the establishment, walking the prescribed path, uh, uh, belonging to a large group of people, corporations, businesses, uh, uh, organized religions, established institutions, um, crossing your T's, dotting your I's, uh, doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. Um, sometimes there's a, a sacrifice of, of individuality or self-expression, but the payoff is that you get the safety and sense of belonging to something bigger than yourself, greater than yourself. Uh, it represents kind of following the path that you've been doing. And in, in job, work, and career place, this could be a, a job or career path that you've invested a lot of time in, uh, a project that you've invested a lot of time in. And for some of you, again, this could be a spiritual path as well, and you know, actual religion for some of you. Now, the Hierophant is paired with the Moon card. The Moon card can represent uh, the Moon card can represent the path being hidden or cloudy or not that clear. Things look very different by the light of the moon than they do by the light of the sun. There's a lot of hidden uh, crevices and shadowy nooks and corners. Uh, not all is revealed with the moon. It also speaks of a deeper sense of spirituality as well, but can represent feeling a bit lost, a bit without an anchor, and not quite sure of what direction you're going to go to. And for some of you, I feel like the Hierophant is representative of 
whatever this this thing or this situation that you've been investing in, whether it's a job, a career path, a project, a relationship, it's kind of been the status quo, something you've just taken for granted. You've just been been on this path. And I feel like whatever's happened recently is causing you to kind of take another look at it and examine whether or not you're on the right path or whether or not you want to continue investing in this, whether or not you want to still belong where you are. Now, next to that, we have the Eight of Pentacles, <clears throat> followed by death or transformation. So the Eight of Pentacles, I often refer to as the worker bee card. Pentacles is earth energy. And uh, so the energy of this suit often manifests itself in earthly, tangible, material things. In the material world we live in, often it, it represents things like money, finance, job, property, career, assets, real estate, things like that. You, the things that you can see and touch and feel. The Eight of Pentacles represents uh, having a pretty good solid foundation underneath you, particularly financially or or materially, certainly in terms of seniority. You've reached the eight already. Because of your, your perseverance, your dedication, your commitment, uh, it can represent working hard, working a lot, working overtime, having a dream, having a goal, something that you're working towards. Uh, he's This man is working just as hard on this eighth pentacle as he has on the seven that he's already completed. He's, he's worked hard to build up a good, solid, stable foundation for himself. And again, I feel like for a lot of you, you're questioning this path that you've been on for quite some time, which you haven't questioned before, but something has happened perhaps to make you doubt the loyalty you've been invested, the work commitment and sense of loyalty that you've been investing in this as well. It's kind of like, is this really what I thought it was going to be? Is, is Am I going to get out what I planned on when I have invested myself in this? Is this really gonna pay off for me? Do I really have trust and faith in this? Do, can I really rest in this? Uh, do I need to adjust my my long term vision and goals? Am I on the right the right path? So that Eight of Pentacles is paired with death or transformation, and I feel like for some of you, <clears throat> this is death represents a clearing away of ground, um, a, a, a significant something coming to an end in a very significant way uh, and the ground being cleared so that rebirth can occur, uh, things being cleared out so that you can plant something new um, uh, because rebirth always follows death and beginnings always follow endings. So a, something significant coming to an end so that something else can be reborn. It represents a very transformative change and a new beginning. And paired with the Eight of Pentacles, again, whatever it is that you've been investing in, believing in, it looks like whatever has happened recently uh, that's kind of left you feeling very taken aback, taken off guard, or, or even be betrayed or taken advantage of perhaps has caused you to second guess and doubt that if you're on the same path or if everything that you've been, been invested is actually worth it. You're kind of going un undergoing this transformation, looking, re-examining, uh, reflecting and assessing on on what you've been investing yourself in, which is where we find ourselves at the end of the month as well. At or towards the end of March 2017, perhaps transitioning a little into the beginning of April, we have the Seven of Pentacles followed by the Hermit. Again, it feels like a very contemplative, more or less kind of uh, fairly quiet uh, couple of weeks for you, Scorpio, because you're, you're trying to figure out if you need to change direction or not. Um, and the Seven of Pentacles is all about that. It's reflection and assessment. It's harvest time on this card. This woman is getting ready to pick her harvest. She has invested a lot of time, effort, labor, attention into this, and she's ready to pick uh, the fruit that has grown. But she hasn't yet begun to pick because she's she's taking a look at it. Did she get what she expected to get? Is the harvest what she expected to get? Does it at least reflect her investment uh, of effort into it? Should she pick what she can and leave? Should she pick it and grow the same crop next year? Should she pick it and, and do something different next growing season? Reflection, assessment, what have I, what have I been investing in? What have I gotten back? Uh, is this worth continuing in? Now, the Seven of Pentacles is paired with the Hermit, another major arcana card. The Hermit can represent uh, solitude, uh, isolation, but not necessarily in a negative way. I mean, the Hermits do what they do. Hermits, monks, monastics, what do they do? They withdraw from conventional society. They withdraw from outer distractions in order to go within and to seek out 
clarity, answers, uh, solutions, introspection, wisdom. Uh, this man is 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 walking over this narrow precipice and he's using the light of this lantern to guide his steps by, to navigate by. And this lantern is, the light from this lantern is symbolic for all his many years of experience and wisdom and lessons learned. The hermit also represents as advice, using the accumulation of all your experiences so far, everything that you know, all your life lessons uh, and wisdom to date, uh, to help guide you and navigate you through this. Again, it looks like you're spending the next couple of weeks evaluating where you're going, where you've been, what you've in, been investing in. Is it worth continuing? It looks like something has happened to make you second guess that or to doubt that, that all of your efforts are still going to continue to pay out for you. I feel like for a lot of you, it's concrete. It's it's a job situation, a work situation, um, perhaps a career path entirely, um, some other project that I think felt very solid and stable, but has been shaken up by something for some reason. And now you're just, you're reevaluating. Do I need to change my workplace? Do I need to, am I going to be changing career paths? Do I need to dump this project? Uh, I had this long-term goal and vision. Do I need to change or shift that in some way? And it looks like the next couple of weeks are being spent kind of looking at that, taking an honest uh, evaluation of, of that, or that's the advice that you're being given. I don't see any direct action being taken. In fact, I feel like the next couple of weeks, you, you need to take carve out some time to kind of really put some thought and reflection into this and figure out if uh, where you thought you were going and where you wanted to go, what your goals were, are still in fact the same, and if you can accomplish them on the path that you're on right now. So, yeah. Well, Scorpio, that pretty much wraps up your March 2017 mid-month readings. I hope you have enjoyed it, or at least found it useful, uh, that it's brought a little bit of uh, wisdom, insight, and clarity. It was a pretty clear... Uh, felt like it went pretty fast, actually. It was pretty clear. Again, I'm not getting much relationship energy off of this. It feels more concrete than that. So I hope that at least some of you watching has found it useful. Uh, again, if any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, just click on that little about button or description button on my homepage and feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one, mcguire at gmail.com. I would be very happy to work with you. And I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the April 2017 general readings. And until then, Scorpio, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.